Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm grateful for the opportunity to address the 15th BRICS Summit, in which everyone present here is in agreement about the intensity and scale of the challenges facing our world and the urgent need to address them. It is appropriate that the theme of this 15th summit has Africa as its focus. And I thank President Matamela Cyril Ramaphosa and the South African government and people for the invitation and for the warm hospitality the Ghanaian delegation has enjoyed here in South Africa. For an organization that represents some 30% of global GDP and some 42% of the world's population, the importance of BRICS, comprising Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, to the economic growth and the promotion of progress and prosperity around the world cannot be stressed enough. And I must applaud successive leaders of the BRICS countries for sustaining the relevance of this body. Excellences, never has there been a time in recent history where malevolent forces have combined in such a manner to bring hardships to the world, especially to those of us in Africa. We are indeed operating in the most difficult of times. The interlocking challenges and the convergence of crises we are faced with pose existential threats that require immediate solidarity and collective action. It is obvious that the world has virtually run out of time to work together in the spirit of multilateralism. If we do not renew our commitments to build, keep, and consolidate peace and democracy all over the world, we would have to brace ourselves to live in a new and more dangerous world today and in the future. The issues of peace, progress, and prosperity in BRICS countries and Africa are deeply intertwined, which presuppose that ensuring the development of Africa should be in our common interest, which will help right the historic injustice of Africa, the richest continent in the world, being as a result of systemic exploitation, the continent with the highest number of the poorest people. Africa, I need reminding you, has 1.3 billion inhabitants, nearly 18% of the world's population. And in 2050, will be 2.5 billion, meaning that one out of every four persons in the world will be African. Now more than ever, strong partnership between the BRICS nations and Africa, reinforced political dialogue, and expanded cooperation in the fields of economic growth and international security are required. We have to work together to achieve our goals, including a fair, equitable process of energy transition, which recognizes that the entire African continent is responsible for less than 4% of global emissions and which safeguards the prospects of Africa's development. Excellencies, I urge this meeting to address one issue of importance for us in Africa and I believe for the world generally. That is the urgent necessity for the reform of the United Nations, especially on composition and structure of its Security Council. The contemporary world has moved on significantly from the post-1945 world, which gave rise to the birth of the United Nations and the makeup of the Security Council. The world of 2023 is not the world of 1945. The crisis of the global financial institutions and of global governance under the United Nations system, which were created from the rubble of the Second World War, is a deep crisis. It will continue until a fair system is put in place, 
a system that reflects the new balances, no longer based on who won or lost the Second World War, but on the major contemporary and future balances. I believe strongly that despite its numerous challenges, Africa is on the cusp of building a great new civilization, which will unleash the considerable energies and huge potential of the African peoples, so that we will make our own unique contribution to the growth of world civilization. Together, working with the rest of us on the continent and with our increasingly educated, skilled, dynamic, and growing youthful population, operating under the aegis of the African Continental Free Trade Area, whose Secretariat Ghana has the honor to host. I'm confident a strong partnership with the BRICS nations can help construct a prosperous and self-confident Africa. Now, I'd like to end by extending hearty congratulations to Prime Minister Narendra Modi on India's historic achievement of yesterday. I thank your Excellencies for your attention.